guys, thanks for joining me for the next tutorial. I'm going to be colouring a colouring page from Jasmine's book again. I'm really excited about this one. So this is from Jasmine Beckett Griffith's book, A Fantasy Art Adventure. So this is part one. I am colouring in Jasmine's page uh, Clockwork Dragonling. I've just got my tools here for using pencil, my eraser, my duster, things like that. I've also got my colour list here as well. So we're going to start off with skin. I thought that we would separate the video a little bit uh, so that you could find the sections easier on YouTube. Um, so I've just split it up and put a little, uh, I guess, a title page between each section for you. And I'll do the same in part two. So we're going to start with the skin. Now I'm doing this theme um, purples and pinks. So this first colour's already popped up on the screen there for you. It was 194 and it's red violet. And I'm just going around all the shadow areas with this one. So uh, anywhere where the hair is sitting on the skin or the shadow might be on the face from the light um, being on the opposite side and things like that. So I'll just pop those areas in now. Okay, so I'm really doing this very very lightly for the skin so I'm going to start off doing it um, lightly first and then I'm going to come back in when I'm happy with that and just go over it with a uh, heavy hand so uh, with pencil it's good because you can just sort of go in with a light um, layer first and then if you decide that you don't like it you can then bring in other colors over the top of that so at the moment I'm doing just a light layer of this dark color and I'm filling in all the parts of the skin as I said that would be shadowed so I'm putting in some uh, nose creases under the mouth and under under the nose there and also on the cheeks I'm going to put in um, some shadow depth there where I want her cheeks to be uh, puffier so I'm doing that now So this is very, very light again, and I'm just doing some fingers and things like that there as well. So I'm popping in now with 189, which is cinnamon, and I'm going to go over the top of what I've already done, and then I'm going to bring it out a little bit further. So still with a very, very light pressure, I'm just uh, filling out the shadow areas, just bringing that uh, color over the top of the 194, and I'm just bringing that uh, cinnamon color over the top and add a little bit further. So we, we're extending that area now uh, But making sure that we do go over the top of the other color as well. So it's it blends nice and smoothly
So now I'm bringing in 131, which is medium flesh. So this is a little bit um, lighter again, and I'm just going to come over the top of both of the first colors and just bring this out a little bit further. So I'm layering this on nice and lightly so that you can um, see the shadow areas that I'm uh, creating right now. So just first of all, the very light layer, and now I'm going over both the other two colors, and I'm just bringing it a little further out. So I'm creating um, the effect of dark to light by using doing it on top of the previous colors and coming out a little bit further. So also making sure I do the fingers and the um, shadows and creases in the fingers there as well. Now I'm going to come in uh, with the light at her color. It is 132. It's light flesh. So this is our lighter skin tone color. And I'm just going to go from the shadow area all the way out to the highlight area. So I'm going to co cover the whole, um, most of the face using this now. So just filling in all of the wider areas and going over the top of all of those dark colors. I actually get really sore hands from coloring. So I actually haven't done this for the rest of the skin. I have only done this first layer with the face just to show you how to um, do that. Um, all of the other features of the picture I have done just one layer and I've started it with the darker on a firm um, hand and then I've as I've come out further towards the highlight area I've lightened that color up a little bit so this is really the the only um, part that I'm actually going to do two layers on So now I'm going to bring in a yellow tone. So I'm bringing in 103, which is ivory. You could also use cream for this as well, uh, depending on what kind of look that you're after. So I've just used uh, the ivory and I'm just going over the remainder of um, the highlight areas there and um, spreading this out over all of the colors again. So I, I go over the darker colors as well with this, just to sort of layer that on. Um, and then I'm just blending it all the way out to the highlight area, still with that really soft touch. Um, and then in the next layer, I will go in a bit firmer and I'll show you how that works.
Okay, so I'm going to bring in the dark color again, so 194 red violet. And I am just going to do the second layer. So this layer I am going to do a little bit firmer. There was a couple of bits there. I've just filled them out a little bit further. But now I'm going to go over them quite dark. So I'm going to use firm, firm pressure right on the edge part there. And then just bringing it a little bit further out. But getting uh, lifting the pencil a little bit so it's not quite as dark as I come out. So really dark on the edge. And then I lift the pressure up and I do really light out on into the highlight. So starting really, really dark and hard pressure here. And then I sort of go over the top of that and just do it a little bit lighter so that the next color will blend into that nicely. And I'm not going to have a line um, where the colors are blended together. So fairly dark here zoomed in a bit so you can see the line where it's quite dark and then what I do is I lift the pressure off and I just bring that out a little bit further so that there's actually no real defined line so the next color when I bring it in will go nicely over the top of the color that I've done lightly and that's where I'll put firm pressure with the next color and then I'll lighten the next color up in the middle part again so that the next color then can go on the top of that so I'm building up the color but giving it a nice transition while building it up Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to do the next color. So next color was cinnamon. So I've got 189 cinnamon there and I'm just going to show you how I go over the top of the next level and bring it out so you can't see a line. So I'm actually going to put firm pressure from the edge and bring it out over the top of 
the other color so where I put light pressure on the other color will be quite firm with this color still and then I'm just bringing the next color out softening that up so lifting my pencil up a little bit as I come further out towards the highlighted part to give it a softer pressure but trying to sort of blend that in so there's actually no line between the two colors so firm in the darker areas and then coming out and lifting my pencil up a little bit and bringing that further out so I'm getting that smooth transition between the two colors and I'm not just getting a line directly um, on top of each other with each different color so they're nicely blended So it is really the same technique that you would do with markers as well because with markers we go over the top of the darker color and we bring that next color up into the highlight further. So when I say that it's the same technique with pencils it really is the same technique. So you're just going in with firmer pressure though um, obviously with markers you don't put firm pressure on but you are um, with this pencil creating the same look so you're getting lighter out further in the shadow in the highlight area and then you're dark in the shadow areas So now I'm going to come in with the next color which is medium flesh, so 131 medium flesh and I'm just going to go over the top again. So we're going over the shadow areas and bringing this color further out. So we're creating that beautiful blended shadow. It looks natural, it doesn't look like there's one color right next to the other color and not blended. Um, it's nice and smooth and we just keep putting it out over and out towards that lighter color now.
We are also going to use white over the top of the entire area which will give it a smoother blend again. Um, it does wash out the colour a little bit so you can then go over it again but that's how we get it to look nice and smooth. You can really see that her cheek is uh, really popping out there now so there's a real indentation um, where her cheek is creased in or her mouth is coming into the cheek there. So I've got light flesh which is 132 and I'm just going to go over the top of that again and bring it further out into the highlight area. So nice firm pressure going over the top of the previous colours and coming out a little bit further. going to come back in with the medium flesh and just do the arms as well just coming in a little bit closer here again and um, you can see the transition between the colors now so just blending over the top of the previous one and then just further out into the highlight area so you can really see there's a shadow and that that shadow moves um, up her arm as the light reflects off it I did just go back into the face with a little bit of that medium flesh. I'm just going back over that with the light flesh again now. And then I'll go and do this on her arms and neck as well. So I brought it all the way into the highlight area and I've done it really lightly over that whole whole highlight area and then I will go over that with ivory again in a sec. So just doing that light flesh on the neck and the arms and hands now. And as I said I will just extend that now right out to the highlight but I'll do it really lightly over that remaining highlight area. So I'm doing it dark over everything else, a dark and hard pressure and then as I come out to the highlight I've loosening off that pressure and just lightly going over the whole lot. So now I've got the 103 which is ivory and I'm going to go over the entire shadow area and do this all over through to the highlight area. So I will do the highlight area here just bringing over the entire face, arms and neck. So firm pressure all over now. So what that means is that I'm flattening the tooth out on the page. I'm just filling in the rest of that colour.
So now I'm bringing in my white pencil. I'm using a Luminance pencil here, but it is quite small and uh, my hand does get too sore from holding it. So I do change it over to a Prismacolor um, halfway through the coloring. So um, don't get confused between the two whites. Um, they're still very, very similar. The Luminance one is a little bit softer. Um, and I think it is, it does cover a bit more white than what the Prismacolor does, but they're both just as good. Um, so I'm going to use Prismacolor white a little bit further on, and um, at the moment I'm using the Luminance one. So all I'm doing is I'm using circular motions, and I'm spreading white all over the highlight areas, and I'm bringing it out over the top of all the dark areas. So I do start from the highlight this time and move out so that the pencil doesn't drag any of the darker colors back into that light. So we're going to do the hat and the goggles now. Now I'm going to do them grey, um, so I'm going to use the cool, cool greys to do this. So uh, the first grey I have is the darkest one, uh, which is 235 Cold Grey 6. So I'm just doing the, uh, heart, uh, sorry, the shadow areas of the top of the hat here. So I'm not going to do two layers this time. I'm just going to go over with one layer so I'm doing it really heavy right near the line and then I'm just bringing that out and lifting up the pressure as I come further up away from that line. Okay, so I've got two, three, four, cold grey five, and I'm just going to go further out into the highlight area. So I'm going to go over the darker area, right where the line was, with firm pressure, still keeping that firm pressure until I come a little bit further out towards that lighter area. So I get release that pressure as I come up further out into the lightest area. So firm here, and then light out further. So the next one I've got is cold grey 4 and we're just going to do the same thing. So we'll do on the shadow areas and bring it out further. You can see that quite clearly there that the colour, it's, it is firm pressure for near the darker area and then as I come up it, it is lighter. So we've got 232 which is cold grey 3. Doing the same thing. And then we've got cold grey 2, which is number 231. And then finally we've got our 230, which is cold grey 1. And this is the final colour, so I'll just go up. I've left a tiny little bit of white at the top there. And I'm going to blend with white now. And I'm going to start from the white part and bring it back towards the dark area. So you can see now that's created the look of a shine on the top there. We're going to do exactly the same thing now all over the hat. Um, so I won't speak through that. I have got the colours listed up on the screen. I'm just coming back over this now with the darker shadow colour just to make sure that that depth is still there. I'm just starting on the other side now.
You can really start to see now with those little highlight areas um, that you have got a shiny look uh, on it could be metal or it could be leather whatever it is there's that shiny look now on there so it's really easy sort of to create that look without too much effort. So we've almost finished that now. I have left the glass um, blank at this stage because I'm going to come back in with some colours to reflect off the sky and things later on. Um, so I'll leave that to last. But your helmet or hat, goggles, whatever it is, is now finished. Just going to go over it now with some white just to bring out those highlight areas a bit more. You might want to come back in with the darker pencil again and just darken up the shadows just to give it a bit more of a pop too. So I've got that one there which was the, the darkest cold grey. So I'm just, touch, just touching up uh, around the edges of the goggles, making them a little bit darker there. Um, these are like the last finishing, finishing touches just to bring it out a little bit more.
So I just missed the side two areas now which um, overhang the wings. Um, it looks like a little bit like armor over the top there so I'm going to do them the same color as the uh, goggles there. So I've just started with the darker color and I'm moving my way up to the lightest one again. And then I'm going to cover that with white again too. So just remember uh, with the white parts at the end I am going to go over a lot of that with some white gel pen just to make sure that they do look like they are shiny. Um, so if you haven't quite got the look or the white didn't quite bring it out enough you can use that white gel pen over the top to do that later on. So now we're going to color the dress. I'm starting with 141 Delft Blue and I'm going to go in and do all around the outline of um, the dress or the piping of the dress there and putting in any shadow areas that need to be there as well. So I'll do that first. I'm also going to do the boots in this color as well. So just the same as before, I'm doing firm pressure around the edge of that shadow area and then just as I come further out towards the highlighted area, I'm just releasing the pressure on the pen and just doing it lightly.
I just realized that I've missed a little bit of skin there so I'm just going to run through and finish that little bit off there. So now I'm coming in with my next colour which is 137 Blue Violet and I'm just going to go over the top of the shadow areas and the darker areas of the dress now with this and just firm pressure closer to the darker area and then releasing that pressure out towards that highlight area. So now I'm bringing in the next colour which is 249 and that's mauve. So coming more into the purple areas now. So doing exactly the same thing, firm pressure towards the edges and then just coming a little bit further out towards a highlight. Now I'm bringing in some purple violet, so that's 136 purple violet and I'm just doing exactly the same thing, so blending it out towards the highlight area 
I still wanted to give it a shiny look like the hat so that it still looks like leather or metal um, but uh, I'll come back in with another lighter purple and then we'll do some white as well. So we've just got violet next, 138, and I'm just going to bring that further out into those highlighted areas. I'm just going to bring it lightly over the full highlight as well because I am going to do white next, so I will be blending this out towards the dark area then. So now I'm coming back in with white and I'm just going to go from the highlight area out towards those darker areas and cover up the entire area with the white.
I'm just going back in with the mauve. This is 249 and I'm just doing some of those shadow areas again there. And I missed a little bit underneath uh, on top of one of the boots there. So I'll just fix that up. And also the little patches on the sides there. I think they're um, clips or something on the side of the boots there. So I'm going to do that as well. Now we're going to start with the water. So I'm going to use similar colours in the water as I have with the dress. So first of all we've got the Delft Blue 141 and I'm just going around the shadow areas with this and I'm kind of lining this in along with the water. So once I've popped this around this, around this side I do just put lines in the water across from the shadow area and I just do them randomly um, all the way up to the horizon.
So now I'm coming in with mauve 249 and I'm just repeating the same steps but I'm just doing random little lines around on that water because I'm going to bring in other colors in between those lines. So I'll do it darker around the um, hills and where the shadows would be over the top of it and then I'll just do random lines around. So I've just brought in middle purple pink and I'm just doing the same, just random lines around different areas in the water. I'm leaving some light spots there for the yellow because the sun will be reflecting off the water. I've now got some light purple pink and I'm going in and doing the same thing. And then I've got some light magenta and I'm going to do the same thing. So giving it a little bit of a rainbow effect. So I've got some 121 which is pale geranium lake and I'm just going to put some orange tones into the water now clear is where I'm going to put the yellow so this will kind of go pink with the yellow Now I'm going to bring in some light chrome yellow which is 106 and I'm just going to do some yellow randomly throughout the water as well and I'm going to do it close to those highlighted areas that I've left so there's a little bit of shine from the sun. So now I'm going to blend that entire water out with white. So I'm just going to blend it out You could use circular motions or lines, just sort of uh, smudging it in so that it all blends in together, but still keeping its, um, you can still see that it's kept its colour lots so that it hasn't actually smudged the colour in and made a yucky brown or anything like that. Um, just blending that out, just so they don't look like pencil marks, but more water ripples.
Now we've done that, we are moving to the wings. So we're going to start with our 125 middle purple pink and I'm going to go in and line all of the highlight areas so anywhere that there would be shadow first. So underneath, underneath each of the wings would be darker so I'm popping all that in now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some small feathery strokes to each of those wings or each of those feathers. So just like little lines coming from the shadow area just straight down so fairly light um, on the pencil like I'm not pushing very hard just doing some light feathering um, down and also I'll do a few up as well. Now I'm going to bring in some light purple pink and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to do little tiny lines on from the shadow area out and I'm just going over the top of those um, shadow areas as well and just sort of blending them out a bit more.
as I'm doing more and more of those lines, um, you can see those wings really starting to build up. So I'm using that pale geranium lake again. And I'm just doing exactly the same thing. So these are just light strokes out. Um, so giving that feather look. And just building in a little bit more colour as we go. So we've got some uh, 120 ultramarine and we're just going to put some of this through now because we have purples in the water uh, we're going to have some blues in the dragon as well. I wanted to put a little bit into the wings too. So just some little light strokes or lines through uh, the wings there just to give that uh, little bit of um, blue look. So I'm doing some from the bottom and some from the top of the, the feathers there as well and just spreading them all over. So just to tie it all in together now, I'm going to put some of that 106 light chrome yellow. I'm just going to flick a little bit of this through the highlights of the wings just to show um, the yellow from the sun in there as well. Now I'm going to bring in some of that white, but I'm not actually going to do it like I have the other um, times that I've used the white. I am just going to do this in strokes um, because I don't want to blend it all in together and I wanted to keep it uh, looking like little strands. Um, I've just done strokes on it to keep that look so that they don't blend in together or smudge in together. So I'm just doing little lines over the top and just doing a little bit extra on the highlighted parts of the feather.
Okay, I, I, I'm going to come back in and do the shadows in a little bit. I'm going to do the lips first. So we're going to start with that middle purple pink. And I'm just going to colour underneath the middle line there in the middle of the top lip and on the edges of both sides of the bottom and top lid lip. And I'm going to bring that out with the light purple pink. I'm going to leave a little gap for the white. So now I'm bringing in the white and I'm just going to do those highlighted areas and over the top of the colour of the lips as well. So it's really giving it a shiny effect. And I'll go back in with those colours again and just darken it up a little bit more. So now we're going to come in with the stockings. So it comes up pretty quick, but I am using the 120, which is ultramarine now. Before I start that, I'm just going to use a grey lead pencil and I'm just going to mark out the shadow areas of the leg there so I don't go too far in with them. So I'm using that 120 ultramarine and I'm just doing all of the shadow areas to so where the leg is curving over or where a part of the leg might be crossed over, there would be a shadow there as well, or where the dress is sitting there. So just putting all those areas in first. And then I'm going to bring or lighten up this uh, colour all over the highlight area. So I'm going to come back in with white to make it the highlight. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to cover it in with that blue, just with light pressure first though. So I've done hard pressure on the edges and then light into the middle. Now I'm going to come in with my white pencil and I'm just going to blend that out. So from the middle there I'm just going to push the um, pigment of the pencil out towards those darker areas again. So that's giving me the highlight look. I'm just erasing some um, of the lead pencil there as well so you can't see it through that white. It's really there just for a guide so that I knew how far to go in uh, with the shadow on it. So now I'm going to bring in some uh, light chrome yellow and I'm just going to 
to the highlighted areas here. I am going to go over this with the Pale Geranium Lake. So now I've got that Pale Geranium Lake. I'm just going over the top of the yellow area and bringing this out to the highlight. I'm going to do a light layer of this over the highlight area as well and then blend this out with the uh, white pencil. And at the end I will put a bit more highlight into that with uh, the Posca white pen as well. I'm now going to come in and do the shirt. I'm going to do the shirt a pale blue color. So I'm using that 120 which is the ultramarine and I'm just filling out the shadow areas and where the creases of the shirt might be. So I'm going around the areas where clothing is sitting on the shirt and also where the creases would be. So some of those I've extended out a little bit further uh, to give them a little bit more detail. So I'm just filling those out now. So I'm just going to blend that out now a little bit with the light ultramarine. I am going to leave a gap for white. So this will be the highlight area. Just helps to give the clothes a, a rounded look, a look that they're not actually flat. Um, so popping that in there now. So I am just going to blend that out with white and I'll come back into the shadow areas and perhaps darken them up a little bit more. I'm going to use these colors on the bracelets as well. So I'll just go ahead and put that in there too. So um, I hopefully this part of the tutorial has been good. Um, obviously we've got the second lot to come. 
So um, hopefully I will have that one posted pretty shortly after this one goes up. So I'm just coming in with the ultramarine to do the bracelets now. If you did like the video, it would be great if you could subscribe. Um, you would then get uh, notifications when I do upload new videos. You could also join our Facebook group as well. If you'd like to um, put a request in for a picture, um, it doesn't have to be uh, a jasmine picture, it could be anything, um, just let me know that as well. And if you have any questions or tips, um, I'm always there to ask. So I'm just blending the pencils out. I used the lighter ultramarine then, and now I'm going to use some white to go over the highlights of that. So last of all, I'm just going to put in the shadow areas of the wings again. So those shadow areas did have lightened up a lot from adding in the extra color and the white. So I'm just going in now and just deepening all of those shadow areas. So I'm really just outlining all those um, uh, feathers again. So just finishing up uh, this one now. But uh, thank you all so much for watching and hopefully um, you enjoy this one and the next video as well. And um, it would be great to meet you and I'd love to see some of your colorings that you do do, anything that I've inspired you with or um, you followed along with. I'd love to see those as well. So th thanks again.